Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens do battle on Sunday Night Football. And that is caught. Ray Rice, no contest. Pass is intercepted by Paul Kruger. Oh my gosh, look at his nose. The ball is loose and it's Polamalu. Huge play. Redmond breaking Holy tackles God. gets into the end zone. He is looking like Superman. To the end zone, he goes and it's caught for the touchdown. What a football game. Oh, he is at his best. And what drama awaits tonight as you look at the standings. If Baltimore wins, they would be two up. If Pittsburgh wins, they'd be in a tie with the Ravens for first place in the AFC North. Well, Mike Tomlin is in his sixth season as the Pittsburgh head coach. He's already been to two Super Bowls, winning one moment ago. He spoke with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Coach, with Ben Roethlisberger out, you said all week the priority was to focus on the strengths of Byron Leftwich. What are those strengths? You know, he's got a ridiculously strong arm. It also happens to be accurate. He can hit any spot on the field, vertical or horizontal, and we need to make him defend him. The Ravens offense has been scoring points and putting up yards like never before. Which of their weapons will your defense focus on first tonight? You know, they got a lot of weapons. We can't focus individually on any of them. I guess Joe Flacco is a great place to start since he handles the ball quite a bit. But for us, it's about staying in our wheelhouse, playing to our strengths, and being where we're supposed to be and seeing what we're supposed to see. We believe when we do that, we can stop anyone. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. And both of these teams are riddled with injuries. The Ravens are without starting cornerback Jimmy Smith, defensive end Pernell McPhee, backup nose tackle Terrence Cody, and starting left guard Bobby Williams. As for the Steelers, in addition to Roethlisberger, they are without wide receiver Antonio Brown, right tackle Marcus Gilbert, and safety Troy Polamalu, who's missing his sixth straight game and eighth of the season. But Tomlin made it clear earlier in the week, Al, and I quote, we're not looking to make excuses. Excuses are tools of the incompetence. Thank you, Michelle. He never does. Lynn Swan and John Stallworth are here. As are a lot of old Steelers. Baltimore won the toss and deferred. Justin Tucker was having a great rookie season. And Chris Rainey back to receive for Pittsburgh wearing their throwback uniforms for the second time this season. And we're underway in Pittsburgh with a touchback. And let's take a look right now at the Pittsburgh starting offense. Byron Leftwich, Marshall. Richard Mendenhall, Illinois. Will Johnson, West Virginia. Mike Wallace, Ole Miss. Emmanuel Sanders, Belleville, Texas. Heath Miller. Virginia. Max Starks, Florida Gators. Willie Colon, Oxford University. Marquise Pouncey, Florida. Ramon Foster, Tennessee. Mike Adams, the Ohio State University. And here is Byron Leftwich, picked in the first round by Jacksonville back in 03. He was going to be their franchise quarterback, lasted four years there. And makes his first start since 2009 tonight, and he'll go right to the air. He gets great protection. He goes deep downfield, and it's broken up. And a flag is thrown. Carrie Williams broke it up, intended for Mike Wallace. As on the very first play of the game, they go deep, and they're going to get a pass interference call. I don't think Kerry Williams had any choice. Mike Wallace ran by him like a blur, and he grabbed his arm as he was going by, just trying to slow that bullet down a little bit. Yes, uh, we found out about Byron Leftwich's arm. He uncorked that thing. And if you thought they were going to go conservative tonight, well, they may before the night is done, but the first play is good for a 42-yard penalty. And a first down at the 38-yard line. And now the run and end around with David Gilroy to the outside. And he picks up eight yards. And what a start for the Pittsburgh Steelers with Leftwich tonight. Great job by Will Johnson, the pullback, coming across almost sort of a lead blocker and gets the defender upended, allowing that reverse to gain traction. Emmanuel Sanders down the field, working against Corey Graham as well. Gain of seven, second down and three. The running back is Chris Rainey. And they empty the backfield as he sets up to the left side. 
And Leftwich dancing, buying some time. And Leftwich will take off. And Leftwich is inside the 20. And can you believe that for a start? Touchdown, Pittsburgh. <laughs> That is just crazy. 31 yards on a left which run. Every time I think we do one of these games, it's the craziest it could possibly be. It gets even crazier. Byron Leftwich was laughing at the idea that he could play scrambler and do the things that Ben Roethlisberger could do. But what did John Harbaugh tell us? He said, we watched so many games on tape against this guy. He moves better than you think. And there, right off the bat, you see it. Unbelievable. Longest rush of his career, the prior long was 20. That was 31. Sean Sweezen for the extra point. It takes 43 seconds. Three plays, 7 nothing Steelers. Tonight football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Nissan, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites. By Papa John's, the official pizza sponsor of the NFL, and by Life of Pi, Wednesday, only in theaters. Well, last night, part of Alumni Weekend, Heinz Field hosting the Taste of the Steelers, celebrating the team's 80th season. And a lot of former stars are here. You saw... Dan Rooney back from Ireland where he is the U.S. Ambassador to Ireland. Right in the middle of things as the kickoff is fielded by Jacoby Jones. He's already had two run back for touchdowns in the last month. And back we go to Leftwich's touchdown run. Watch the very end of this. Bernard Pollard is going to set up on the boundary, I think, because he wanted to take a big shot at Byron Leftwich. He wanted to get him down to their third string quarterback, and he paid the price for it. Look at him. He's setting up outside. He's going to hammer Leftwich. And Leftwich said, hammer this. I'm gone. For the record, their third string quarterback is Charlie Batch. And so Flacco on first down now. Hit as he throws, and because he is hit, the pass is wobbly and incomplete. And that's Brett Kiesel coming off a great performance against Kansas City last week, who got there as Flacco released it. Joe Flacco picked in the first round in 2008. He and John Harbaugh came in together. They have been to the playoffs in each of their four seasons together. They've won a playoff game in every year, and last year, Came very close to winding up in the Super Bowl. Second and ten now. And they give it to Ray Rice, who cuts it back. And Rice takes the ball out to the 38-yard line as we take a look at the Baltimore starters. Joe Flacco, University of Delaware. Ray Rice, Rutgers University. Fonte Lee, East Carolina. Toy Smith, Maryland. Anquan Bowden, Florida State University. Ed Dixon. Oregon Ducks. Michael Orr, University of Ole Miss. Jar Reed, Central Florida. Matt Burke, Harvard. Marshall Yonda, Iowa. Coletio Assembly, Iowa State. Assembly doing a very nice job moving in as the starting right tackle in his rookie year. Third and seven now. Flacco out of the shotgun. Four man rush. And the pass is caught, but not for a first down. Shy by two yards as Ryan Clark stops. The tight end, Dennis Pitta, and it's a three and out for the Ravens. Yeah, and try and get them to throw hot over here as they're bringing pressure off the edge. And then they come up with the safety, anticipating this hot throw, and going to drill him before he got to the first down marker anyway. Sam Cook is the Baltimore punter. Emmanuel Sanders sets up at his own 10-yard line for the Steelers. from the 14, but not very far. Good special teams coverage by the Ravens. So early first quarter, here comes Leftwich again, up 7-7. For the complete viewing experience, check it out. NBCSports.com, SNF Extra, a lot of good stuff. Shell reporting from the sideline, and we have a guest analyst tonight, Peter Bowyer, a member of so many of those great Raven defensive units. Chat with him as well on Sunday Night Football Extra. 
Second possession for the Steelers from the 14-yard line. And they hand the ball off on first down. Rashard Mendenhall has only played in a couple of games. Picks up about three. Let's go back and take a look what happened after Leftwich got into the end zone, Chris, for the touchdown. Watch him. He just stumbles. Nobody hits him. He goes down, immediately grabs that right shoulder, his throwing arm side, goes to the sideline, decides he has to get it loose, grabs it again. We have an early development on a great play by Byron Leftwich. And again, Charlie Batch is the other quarterback, 15 years in the league, 37 years old. Meanwhile, Jonathan Dwyer comes in as the running back, and they give it to him. And Dwyer breaks one out to the 28-yard line, but a penalty marker is down. Holding number 74, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still second down. Walt Anderson makes the call on Willie Colon, the longtime right tackle, now a left guard. All right here's Willie as they're going to come across. Looks like he kind of got wrapped up on him. Grabbed that backside left shoulder, and there's a turn of events. You go from first down back inside your own 10 yard line, but Willie Colon, no doubt about it, has made a big difference. He made that move from tackle to guard, and by his own admission, had a lot to learn, but. He's definitely getting there. Second and 15. Now Isaac Redman is the running back. They have four running backs active tonight. And Redman, who had a big game against the Giants a couple of weeks ago, takes it up to the 14. Let's take a look right now at the Raven defense. Altingata, Oregon. Maake Kimoyatu, Utah. Arthur Jones, Syracuse. Axel, Ball So Hard University. Danelle Ellaby. Richmond Senior High School. Jamel McLean, Syracuse University. Alvin McClellan, Kathleen High School. Corey Graham, University of New Hampshire. Bernard Pollard, V. Boilermakers. Ed Reed, the U. Carrie Williams, Washburn. Again, that defense ranked 27th in the league, but when they're backed up, they're great. They're number one in red zone defense. Go figure. Meanwhile, with the play clock going all the way down, Left, which is going to take a charge timeout. Timeout. Pittsburgh, 30 second timeout. Among the guys missing, of course, tonight, Ray Lewis with a torn tricep. So he is on what in the old days was injured reserve, which meant you were done. But there's a special designation this year, and it's conceivable that Lewis could come back and play at the end of December and then into the playoffs if uh, the Ravens get there. So Ray Lewis is out. A lot of stars. It looks like a Pro Bowl roster on the sidelines tonight, in addition to all of the great old Steelers. Yeah, no doubt about it. Toy Polamo, we have seven former active defensive players of the year here, five of them in this game. Unfortunately, those two you just saw, unable to make it. There's one guy who did come back was Terrell Suggs, who tore his Achilles last spring. And he was able to come back just at about the time that they lost Lewis. So third and ten now for the Steelers. On the 14. Blitz on. It's picked up. Pass is caught. And then the, the ball is lost by Wallace. And it is picked up by Reed. And Ed Reed is inside the 20. And Reed will set him up at the 12-yard line. So Wallace had the first down over the middle. Got hit by Chris Johnson. And Ed Reed picks up the fumble. Well, Chris Johnson just arrived with the Ravens. He's their new cornerback. They signed this week, but he comes up huge already. Knocks that football out. And then Ed Reed, Mr. Return Yardage for a defensive player, takes over from there. So the newcomer, Chris Johnson, makes a huge play. And, of course, all turnovers are reviewed. They confirm it upstairs. Johnson brought in, as Chris just said, because Jimmy Smith, the cornerback, with a groin problem, and he had a surgical procedure done. So Johnson comes in, makes a big play, and now Baltimore sets up at the 12 for the first down. And Rice will spin and go nowhere. He's knocked down by Casey Hampton. The most tackled his 12th season. Drafted number one back in 01. Casey Hampton, this is always a little personal for him because they spend a lot of time up front trying to cut his knees. They're really feeling like 
the best way to attack this front of the Pittsburgh Steelers is to get them moving laterally. Those big defensive linemen cut their knees. That time they were unable to do so. And you see what happens when they don't. They'll go head-to-head -to -head tonight with Matt Burke, who's in his 15th season. So the two veterans head-to-head -head on the nose. Second down and 12 from the 14-yard line. And this time it is Rice, and he gets bottled up. It'll be third and long as we take a look at the Pittsburgh defense. Ziggy Hood, Missouri. Casey Hampton, Texas. Brett Kiesel, Grable High School. Go Buffs. Lamar Woodley, University of Michigan. Larry Foote, Michigan. Lawrence Timmons, Florida State. James Harrison, Kent State. Keenan Lewis, Oregon State University. Will Allen, the Ohio State University. Ryan Clark, DBU. IT Square University. Hampton looks like he was in a hostage video. <laughs> third and 11. They split Rice out. Flacco to throw, and it's caught and tackled at the eight yard line is Rice. Ike Taylor is there to make the stop. And the Pittsburgh defense, number one in the league, has limited Baltimore to a field goal attempt. Well, here goes your number one defender out here guarding a running back, and it's a good thing they do. Where will you talk to Mike Tomlin about? The Baltimore Ravens, he says unequivocally, that's the guy. Ray Rice, the guy. You got to stop running, throwing, no matter what it is. They had their best player on him. Justin Tucker, rookie, undrafted out of Texas. He's missed only one field goal attempt this year, a 47 yarder against Cleveland. This is from 26 and right down the middle. So with a turnover, they cash in for three. And it's Pittsburgh seven, Baltimore three, with 8.22 to go in the first. John Harbaugh, fifth year, he's taken his team to the playoffs in each of them, and he's won 11 straight games against the AFC North, which is the equivalent of almost two full seasons. You play six divisional games per year, beat Pittsburgh twice last year, so 11 straight for Coach Harbaugh. The Pittsburgh defense did its job after Rice was able to return the fumble to the 12-yard line, and now Leftwich and the offense will go to work again. Tucker's kick will go through the end zone. Tucker's kick out of bounds. Without Roethlisberger, and he's missed a few of these games, he of course was in the draft class of 047 and 4 when he starts. 0 and 5 in this series when he does it. But yards per game is pretty close. And Pittsburgh, 17 points on offense and 16 without him five game-winning drives in the fourth quarter overtime so it's really kind of been the defense and special teams that's made most of the difference when Ben hasn't played we'll see what happens tonight as he can only observe and as we said at the outset nobody seems to know for sure when we back the speculation that it's going to be about three weeks from the 20-yard line on first down and Leftwich wide open is Emmanuel Sanders who makes the catch in the middle of that Raven secondary all the way out to the 45-yard line for a gain of 25 tackled by Pollard. Well, they tried to drop Trill Suggs back into coverage here, but they voided the entire middle of the field. Sometimes you go, okay, they have two safeties, and there was nobody there, just a blown coverage. And for Byron Leftwich, the thing that he feels that he does best, I kind of like the whole bootleg thing he did earlier, but he thinks he reads defenses that's his strength and that time he saw the mistake took advantage from the 45 yard line you saw the elongated windup. people have been talking about that since his rookie year here he goes again to the outside buying time and observing and then throws him it's incomplete he may have that elongated windup. i mean he's not dan marino let's face it marino would be the other end of the spectrum but he has a cannon yeah he does and he makes up for the fact that it takes a a little bit longer to get the ball out of his hands by the fact that the velocity makes up for that a little bit. Although the, I think the reason he's not a starter in the league right now is because of that big windup. Because when you start that motion, it gives defensive backs a chance to jump on the ball. But as far as just getting the ball there, he can do that. I mentioned number one pick by Jacksonville in 03. And when David Garrard took over for him, and he began an odyssey that went to Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, and now back to Pittsburgh. And he throws, and that one is incomplete. And that was 
Williams covering on the play. He didn't even turn around. He was just looking at Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. Third down. Well, Kerry Williams is not afraid. He's getting right in the face of Mike Wallace on the outside. He's going to give him a little Deion Sanders treatment, and he's perfect position. The ball hit him square in the back. Kerry Williams has really stepped up this year. Of course, they lost their best cornerback, Ladarius Webb, and he has stepped up with four interceptions after not having any the first three years in the league. Webb gone for the season. Third down and ten. Out of the gun, four-man rush, and left foot under pressure, and down he goes, and Paul Kruger comes in from the outside to get the sack and make it fourth down. Leftwich tackled by Kruger. Paul Kruger's strength is playing with his hands. He is just magical. Watch the way he gets Mike Adams' hands off of him. He has the quickest swat when he comes in there. He just gives it a little thing with his hands right there and right through the quarterback. This is Drew Butler kicking. Jacoby Jones feels at the 12 and gets wrapped up at the 14-yard line. Nice tackle by Curtis Brown. First quarter, 7-3 Pittsburgh. So Flacco picked in the first round out of Delaware in 08, home and road, 5-0 at home, 2-2 two two on the road this season. And take a look at that, two-thirds of his passes completed at home and a little more than half on the road. Big disparity there. That reflects the team itself and a huge difference in passer rating. And of course the only two losses Baltimore had this year, one point at Philadelphia, and then they were blown out in a game that got away from them three weeks ago in Houston. Start this drive from the 14. A raucous crowd at Heinz Field tonight. And the pass is called on the outside by Anquan Bolden, their possession receiver, one-time Arizona Cardinal. It's a gain of nine, second down and one. You know, Al, going back to Joe Flacco for a minute, I thought the last two games that he played during the regular season here really defined his career in many ways. Remember that drive, 90 yards, hit the touchdown to Torrey Smith, but you have to remember, there were four drops in that drive, and he still got it done in a huge game. Second and one, and this is Bernard Pierce, kind of a coming of age game, and speaking of drops, if the pass is not dropped in the AFC Championship game, Flacco might have been in the Super Bowl last year. You're exactly right. Lawrence Timmons here is going to come up and make the play. You play off the fullback in this offense, Vontae Leach, and Bernard Pierce is going to have to learn what Ray Rice knows. Follow him. Play action. Flacco going deep downfield, and it is almost picked off. Intended for Smith. Ike Taylor was back there. Got two hands on it. Couldn't hang on. Second and ten. Here you have Ike Taylor, their best corner, and there has been a switch defensively. We've seen so many of these games for years. Ike Taylor has been covering Anquan Bolden. Well, Torrey Smith has become so much the number one guy now. Now they have their best Ike Taylor on Torrey Smith and the matchup. They're going to have a follow situation this whole game. Second and ten from the 27. Flag is thrown offside. I think it's going to be the call. Free play and incomplete. Looked like Harry Foote came across. And he was covering on the play. And I think it was Harrison who came across. Here's Anderson. Offside, number 92. Yep. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Got the jump. You know, anytime, Al, that you're playing against a divisional opponent, you know what their snap counts are, what the head bobs are. He thought he had that thing timed up pretty well there. And I'm sure James Harrison's a little frustrated with the fact that he doesn't have the sack numbers he's had in the past coming off that knee injury. And he's trying to get a little edge there. It was close. Second and five. And Rice following the fullback Leach. To the 34. Vontae Leach, a very important part of this Baltimore offense. When Rice found out Leach is coming over last year, he said, hey, I'm going to go to the Pro Bowl because of this. Watch James Harrison here come down the line. He sees Ed Dixon slide to his right, and he just crams it down the line. There, I just don't think there's a better linebacker in the game closing from the backside than James Harrison. Third down and three. Three receivers to the left. 
Steelers show blitz and back off, and the pass is incomplete. Mike Taylor covering Torrey Smith. It'll be fourth down. You know, that's going to be a throw they're going to have to try to make all night long. You go bunch formation to one side, and then you have one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside. You have to try and hit this. You have to attack Ike Taylor in this situation. And unfortunately, because Ryan Clark ran underneath that, Flacco basically had to throw it away. Sam Cook. Cook will punt. Sanders the punt. to receive. Ran for a touchdown last week off a fake placement attempt against Oakland. Emmanuel Sanders goes for the fair catch and makes it at the 11-yard line with over five minutes to go in the quarter. Steelers up by four. Shot of Chicago where we were last week. We can tell you that on Wednesday as the country gathers to give thanks to men and women of Chicago Fire. No, it's business as usual. Chicago Fire Wednesday night right here on NBC. Back, From the 12-yard line, back, Pittsburgh back. begins this drive. The running back is Jonathan Dwyer, who had a big day against Cincinnati in a Sunday night game a month ago. Well start, number 89, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And that's Jericho Cotterie. Meanwhile, we were telling you about the Ravens and defensively, and normally they're up at the top of the league, and now they're at the bottom, rushing against the pass and overall 27th. Well, a lack of pressure has been part of the equation here too, but as Terrell Suggs continues to get healthier off that Achilles, you would think those numbers would start to tilt back in their favor again. On first and 15, and the ball off to Dwyer. These uniforms which were worn by the old Pittsburgh Pirates in 1934 throwback. So what do you figure this is? Is this, they're either Bumblebee pajamas or prison guard. Which would you vote for? I have no comment. I, I, I you know, whatever. <laughs> I, you know, this is such a great rivalry to me. You know what right. I mean? And, and I just, I love seeing the Steelers uniforms. I'm okay. I know it's all part of making money and all that, but I'd rather see them look ahead. You want to put new right. uniforms on. Let's let's go futuristic and sell some jerseys, and that'd be okay. With me. I can't with see you. the numbers. That's what I'm that's, really mad about. That's the big issue. Second down and 12. Apart from that, no problem. Hand up goes to Jonathan Dwyer. In fact, it's so hard to read them that Malibu Kelly Hayes, who's been spotting for me for more than 30 years, just quit. <laughs> Uh, he'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Third and ten for Pittsburgh now. Well, yeah, a lot of different looking guys now out there on the defensive side. We're so used to seeing Ray Lewis, Ladarius Webb, all these guys on the defensive side for the Ravens. But there have been guys really step up. Paul Kruger's been playing great. Bernard Pollard, a guy that has taken over sort of the emotional lead. Daniel Ellerby inside. A lot of guys that maybe you don't know as well, but have been really playing, playing good football. Steelers' best third down conversion rate in the league to this point this season. And Lefkowitz has his arm hit as he throws. And the pass incomplete, that's Paul Kruger, who had a sack on the last series, who hits him as he throws it, and it's uh, three and out. I'll tell you, Mike Adams is having big problems right here. Kruger coming off this edge, and he's going right through Mike Adams on the outside. Kruger had a huge game last week. That ball was almost hit before it came out. Drew Butler, a rookie from Georgia, is the punter. And here's Jacoby Jones coming over from Houston in the offseason. And Jones is inside the 40. Jones has one man to beat, and that's the kicker. And he is in for the touchdown. Jacoby Jones, and that's what he was noted for in Houston. Goes through his celebration in the end zone. He's run back two kickoffs in the last month from 108 and 105, and that's a 63-yard punt return. Well, Jacoby Jones going to get a little help from Sean Considine right there. Gets that seal block on the inside, and that's really what set him free. But what a difference he has made to these special teams leading kickoff return man in the entire National Football League and now adds a third touchdown on a return for a punt. And so far the Steelers defense has been playing great. It's been everything else getting beat. Fumbles, kick returns. Justin Tucker for the extra point. John Harbaugh coming us last night. All season long, Jones has been saying, put me back there, put me back there. I think 
Yankees won the job. 10-7 Baltimore. Jacoby Jones, well, he's been returning punts all season, and then Harbaugh moved him into return kickoffs against Dallas last month. And take a look at this. 108 yards at M&T Bank Stadium against the Dallas Cowboys, and then against the Raiders last week. This for 105. He's averaging 39 yards per kickoff return. His punt return average coming into the game was only 8.8, which is about average for the league, but a beauty here as he rips one off. Yeah, and there's only been one other player in the history of the game that has two plays of over 105 yards, and it's his teammate, Ed Reed. Ravens on top by three as this kick is fielded by the rookie from Florida, Rainey. And Rainey gets covered, and then ball is loose, but he is down. They're going to say he was down at the 12-yard line before the ball came out. That Ravens defense, you go back to the 2000 season. And if you go through the 12 years since, you can see where they have ranked second overall and then 26 this year, second in points allowed, 13th this year. But in the red zone, they're as tough as ever. Yeah, they are, but it has been a tough year. You lose Ray Lewis, their emotional leader. You lose Ladarius Webb, their best cover guy. You know, you're kind of starting from scratch every week. So, Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator, Chuck Pagano, was the D.C. last year. Now the head coach, of course, of Indianapolis as the pass is caught by David Paulson. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Heath. No, they give him that Heath. <laughs> every, they can't read the numbers either. <laughs> right. <laughs> every time a tight end catches it, you get that Heath champ. This time it's Paulson, though, who is a rookie out of Oregon, picked in the seventh round. I'll tell you, that was Paul Kruger again coming inside this time and getting some pressure on the play. So at some point, they're going to have to come up with an answer for that guy who had two sacks and an interception last week, already a sack in the game here tonight. Second and four from the 18-yard line. And Lindman Hall, who tore up his knee in the final game of last regular season. Sanders gets into it for the moment with Pollard. And then he had an Achilles issue, so Mendenhall has not played very much this season. Well, welcome back. Elodie Nada right out of here. He's just going to go jam up the pile inside there. He had a shoulder injury that had been giving him problems all season long. They dressed him last week in the game against the Raiders, but because the game got out of hand, never had to play him, and they feel like for the first time in a long time, he's healthy and back to 100%. Third down and one. And left with going deep and incomplete. Intended for Jericho Cotchery. So they go long on third and short. Now it's fourth down. Paul Kruger with his moves, with his hands. He is giving Mike Adams fits on the outside. They are going to have to start giving him some help because right now Byron Leftwich is taking too many shots. And we already saw his shoulders a little sore after that long touchdown run. Butler's third punt. And Jones calls oh, for the fair catch and then lets it go and it bounds out at the 29-yard line. Dick LeBeau is 75 years old and there he is, the defensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers and leave it to him no matter how many injuries he has or what he has to do, moving guys in and out of the lineup, 54 consecutive years as a player or as a coach. He's the only guy I know, though, that gets mad if he shoots his age. If he shoots right. 75, he's in a bad mood. He's usually around par or better. Take it back. Low and slow, bro, is what he tells you <laughs> on the golf course. Here's Rice to the outside. And Rice uh, loses the ball, and then he goes out of bounds. So Baltimore will retain possession. In fact, you played for... Uh, for Dick LeBeau in Cincinnati. He was a part of both the teams that we had that went to the Super Bowl, lost both Super Bowls, but it's a brilliant guy. That whole zone blitz concept really got started with him in Cincinnati, and 
I'll tell you, it's going gangbusters to this day. Second down, 11. They're ranked number one defensively in the league. And it's Rice who gets free down the sideline when it looked like Flacco was looking to maybe even throw it away. And Rice somehow gets free down the boundary, and it's a 30-yard gain. we got Lamar Woodley, who's going to be out here in the flat, but you have the cornerback inside who is chasing the wide receiver across the field, so I think Woodley was thinking the corner was behind him when he wasn't. From the 45 now, here's Blanco setting up. And he goes to Pierce, and Pierce breaking a tackle, and should have enough for the first down. The rookie out of Temple as we check with Michelle. Al tight end Dennis Pitta went back to the locker room after the Ravens' first drive. We're told he's being evaluated, but the Ravens won't say for what. But I can tell you he was woozy leaving the field, had to get some support walking off. All right, Michelle, that could be a big loss. He's second in receptions on the team with 37. And the pass to the outside is caught by Bolden in the waning seconds of the first quarter that's a gain of nine it'll be second down and one for Baltimore yeah you're gonna have to keep an eye on Anquan Bolden tonight because he's used to seeing Ike Taylor on the other side so now he gets the younger player Keenan Lewis and Joe Flacco seeing that matchup may come back to Bolden more than usual and they'll let the clock run out, and that will be the end of the first quarter with the score of the Baltimore Ravens 10, the Pittsburgh Steelers 7. NBC's Sunday Night Football from Pittsburgh continues after these messages. Get a shot, aerial coverage tonight, brought to you by Geico, downtown Pittsburgh. It's the Allegheny on the left and the Monongahela on the right, and that's where they form the Ohio River. Downtown Pittsburgh on this Sunday night. It's second down and one. Baltimore begins this drive in the 20-yard line. And Ray Rice is close to a first down. As they take a peek here, and Anderson looks over to the sideline and says, bring in the sticks. The strength of this Baltimore Ravens offensive line is right here. These two guys, Marshall Yonda, probably the toughest guy on their football team, and the young kid, Calicio Simile, on the outside, the second-round draft pick, they think he is going to be a superstar. Big-time player, gets a chance to play next to Yonda, incorporate some of that toughness into his game, but that's where they're going to go when they need a play, especially in the running game. And they picked up the yard they needed there, so it's a first and 10 at the 19. I wonder what's going through Ray Lewis's mind having to miss this game. Mm. You know, I mean, the, he loves football, he wants to play them all, but this game is different. And in two weeks when they meet again in Baltimore, he still won't be ready. From the 19. Blacko throwing into double coverage and incomplete, and Smith diving for the tip ball. It'll be second and ten. Uh, you know, James Harrison, despite the fact that the numbers are down a bit, he's going to get plenty of attention. And there's Vontae Leach. Pretty good little grab hold there. But for Joe Flacco, he's lucky. He just completely misread this coverage. Did not see the dropper underneath there. And almost cost him an interception. Ryan Mundy almost got him. Second and ten. A lot of movement on both sides here, unless you've got three flags. False start, number 76, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Shaw Reed, the left guard. Let's go to Michelle again. Hey, a quick update on Dennis Pitt of the Ravens tight end. Al, in fact, he has a concussion, yeah. and he is out for the night. All right, thank you, Michelle. And that means we'll see a lot more of Ed Dixon, who sees a good deal of playing time anyway. Billy Bajima is the third tight end, and he's up to number two. But Pitta was their best receiving tight end, so it definitely will hurt this passing game. Second and 15 from the 24. Not one down lineman in the formation here. 
Blocked by Flacco, and he gets it away, intended for Smith and incomplete, which works out well for Baltimore as it turns out anyway. Third down and 15. Yeah, they, they were still just moving around pre-snap. Watch Ja Reed here. He's, they're all just kind of getting settled in there, and I think Matt Burke got a little confused and shocked Flacco with that snap. This has been a few plays in a row now, a bit unsettled. That's just Marshall Yonda who's moving. So on third and 15, Steelers still without a defender with his hand on the ground. Everybody standing up. Here comes the blitz. Flacco throws to the outside for only a very short gain as the catch is made by the tight end, Ed Dixon. He's taken down by Timmons, and in comes the field goal group. Here we go, Lawrence Timmons right there is going to be on a read blitz. He tries to make it look like a blitz, but he still has the speed to be able to get outside against Ed Dixon and make that play. Flacco thought he was going to have a freebie out there, but it was the speed of Timmons that recovered. 41-yard attempt for Justin Tucker, a guy who sings opera in five languages. I kid you not. You don't? <laughs> who doesn't? And Tucker, who's missed only one all season, has just missed his second. The open end of Pittsburgh gets another one. The fat lady just saw him. Great little story here. Byron Leftwich almost wound up as a Baltimore Raven in 03. Terrell Suggs did. There's Ozzie Newsom, who's done a fantastic job as in effect the GM at Baltimore but in the 03 draft Ozzie's trying to trade up in front of Jacksonville to get left which we're filling the rest in a second here from the 31 yard line Richard Mendenhall is the back and he'll take it through the middle so Minnesota has the seventh pick they make a trade Baltimore and Minnesota but they have to call it into the league and remember you're on the clock and so Minnesota's calling in. There's only one line going to the league desk. And Ozzie keeps dialing and getting a busy signal. So time runs out. Minnesota has to cough up the pick. Jacksonville moves in there because they're next. They get Leftwich. So Baltimore doesn't get him. And there it was. Leftwich and Gross goes to Carolina. Kevin Williams winds up going to Minnesota. That turns out fine. And then Suggs gets picked by the Ravens, number 10. Yeah, he gets stuck with the defensive player of the year. <laughs> Terrible. Second down and eight. Leftwich buying time and then throws and it's caught up at the 50-yard line. And that time they can let out the Heath champ because that is the, the real Heath Miller. It's unbelievable to watch Byron Leftwich move around like Ben Roethlisberger, though. I mean, this is a guy that had exactly five practice snaps the entire season coming into this week before he got a chance to do the first team reps this year. And he looks so comfortable on the field. I mean, he is just gliding around, moving easily. But he's got a little mm. something working that we haven't quite figured out. Yeah, we saw that at the end of the touchdown run on the third play of the game. In the 49-yard line, a draw. And this time they give it to Dwyer. And we saw him have a big night in Cincinnati. And Mike Tomlin was saying, hey, he's not Jerome Bettis, but he has those Bettis-like qualities. Yeah, he is. But they are basically a between-the-tackle running football team. They run between the tackles more than anybody. And what they were hoping tonight with the return of Rashard Mendenhall is they would have the ability to stretch this Ravens defense a little bit outside. But so far, Rashard Mendenhall hasn't been able to pop one out there. So maybe they're just going to keep hammering inside. Second and four from the 45. And a slip screen to Sanders, but the defense is right there with a marker down. Illegal block in the back, number 89. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Jericho Cotchery. Chris talking about between the tackles. You would figure the Steelers, 62% of the runs inside the tackles, excluding drop plays, by far the highest percentage in the league. Only 5% of their runs 
outside the tackle, so you know where they're going. And 62% way above the league average. On second and 14. And that pass is incomplete. Intended for the fullback. Will Johnson once more to the sidelines of Michelle. Well, you're mentioning the running game, and Mike Tomlin wanted to use all of his healthy running backs, Al, but Isaac Redman right now is in the locker room being evaluated for a concussion. One other note, defensive mm. end Ziggy Hood is questionable with a back injury, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. So Redman is back being evaluated. You've got Todd Haley as the new offensive coordinator. Last year he was the head coach of Kansas City. He gets Mendenhall back tonight. He has Dwyer, who's been dinged that is playing tonight, obviously, and Chris Rainey is the other back. Third and 14, and Baron Batch is another back as well. And that elongated windup in the pass is incomplete, intended for Emmanuel Sanders as Leftwich goes down. It'll be fourth down. One of the issues with this big windup is if you get somebody hanging on you, like we've seen with Ben Roethlisberger over the years, you can't take that kind of windup. Leftwich, he didn't even know he did it until the first time he ever saw himself on tape. He said, I never had anybody coach me when I was young. And Butler's kick is fair caught by Jones at the 20-yard line. Early in the second, it's Baltimore by three. Making a coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile. Pittsburgh. Very nice night. No wind. Temperature in the mid-40s. Clear skies. This drive starts from the 20-yard line. And the ball is handed off to Bernard Pierce. The rookie at a tempo picked in the third round. The back up to Rice. Tackled by Ike Taylor. Game four. And so far this game has gone true to form. Neither team has converted a third down yet. The Ravens 0 for 4. The Steelers 0 for 5. And last year in this game, the Ravens were 14 for 21, converting on third down, unprecedented as far as the Ravens football team goes. Tonight, a different story. Second and six out of the gun. Inside give to Rice. Pittsburgh's done a good job bottling up Rice in most of their meetings since Ray came into the league as the second round pick back in 2008, second behind. Flacco, it'll be third and four. James Harrison is trying to time up this snap count. He's looking right down the line of scrimmage, and he's either getting off just on the snap or just a moment ahead of time. But I think the Ravens are going to have to make an adjustment. They're going to have to get word to Matt Burke that Harrison's about to time one up. And third and four. Pass is caught out in the flat by Rice, and he's able to pick up four and a half yards out to the 31-yard line. Ray Rice, a guy who's very used to playing in this stadium as he played at Rutgers, and they would meet Pitt in here through the years. Came to Baltimore, as we said, second-round pick back in 08, and a guy who is one of the very few three-down backs in the league. Who's in on almost every play, and needs a, a, a rest he takes himself out of the game but about as valuable as any running back in the league from the 31 yard line Flacco and that is caught that's a, with a flag thrown Antoine the Bolden makes the catch he had Keenan Lewis right there with him for the moment it's a gain of 11 holding number 23 defense Penalty has declined. The result of the play is a completed pass for a first down. At the old cross blitz here, but watch Vontae Leach very patiently wait on the second guy, Lawrence Timmons, and pick it up. If you're going to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, you have to be able to pick that one up. And once again, we've got Bolden on the outside working against Keenan Lewis. Probably going to see a lot of that now. First down, quick toss, and this is Bolden, and that time the tackle is made right off the bat by Keenan Lewis after a gain of two, second and eight. 
You know, this has been a big play team for John Harbaugh this year, one of the top teams in the league as far as deep completions down the field. But the Pittsburgh Steelers have been equally good against it. 0 for 14 coming into this game. Teams trying to throw the football down the field against them. And we'll see what play call Cam Cameron just made on a second down and eight to Rice. And Ray has room to the outside. He gets to the 49, another penalty. Holding number 86, offense. Ten yard penalty, still second down. It's Billy Badgman who's going to see more action tonight because Pitt is out. One of the problems that you have when you play this team is that if you have to try and block Lamar Woodley and James Harrison with tight ends, you don't often win. One of the things you'll see a lot of football teams do on offense is put in that extra offensive tackle guy on the outside because tight ends simply cannot handle these two outside linebackers in the running game. Roethlisberger going over things with Batch on the sideline. Second down, 18. Jacoby Jones is split wide to the left. And the pass comes to the slot man. And that is Jones making the catch. And he is taken down after a short game. Kobe Jones, though, has added an element to this offense, Al. He really has, because forever it had been Torrey Smith as the deep threat on one side, and then Anquan Bolden, who's much more of a possession kind of receiver. But now you have Jacoby Jones out there, and his ability to get deep and make plays has forced defenses to balance the formation of them. Right now he's the difference in the game with that punt return for the touchdown. Third and 13. Caught by Jones, but they sniffed that one out, and that's Lewis celebrating those last two stops. Antoine Bolden tried to go get Keenan Lewis, just couldn't quite get there on the tail end of this play. Lewis has been jumping all over these routes, and of course, these Steelers defensive backs they see this all the time in practice because the Steelers run about 25% of their passing game. Sam Cook. Third punt of the night. It's a very short one. It takes a good Baltimore hop. And he's down at the 21-yard line. So it's going to play in the hand. Ravens by a field goal. Well, we'd let you take a look at the difference in the release of those two quarterbacks. Ben Roethlisberger, a pretty traditional way of throwing the ball. Sort of up and out. Now watch Byron Leftwich. A uh, big wheelhouse there, a little bit more like a baseball pitcher maybe, and takes a little more time to get the ball out of his hands. Great way to illustrate that is left which who scored the opening touchdown of the game less than a minute in, rolling right and buying time, and now he's chased and hit as he throws. That's Arthur Jones chasing him down, second down. And we'll show you the difference in the release time of these two quarterbacks. Big Ben gets it out about 0.37. That's pretty good. And left which just about the same. How about the velocity here? A little over 50 miles an hour, about average in this league. Left which on the run anyway, a little bit harder than that. Of course, Ben will tell you he got a running start on that one, so it doesn't count. Roethlisberger, the shoulder strain and a rib injury. And again, not knowing when he'll be back. They, they're at Cleveland next Sunday and then at Baltimore. And this will be for the snap here. Walt Anderson's had a pretty busy half. There is no foul for the delay of game. We had to reset the position of the football. It's second down. All right. Mike Tomlin, you know what he said about this game? He said it's going to be grimy. That's okay. We're mutters. We're a grimy bunch. We endure misery better than most. <laughs> he, he makes you want to play football, he, doesn't he? Does. Well, he's such a, he is, and still the second youngest coach in the league. Second only to Dennis Allen of Oakland at age 40. 
to the outside, and that's caught by Wallace. And you know, Chris, I think about the two coaches tonight, and both franchises went young. They went to guys that people said, what? You're going to hire John Harbaugh, who was the special teams coach at Philadelphia for a long time, and Tomlin, who'd worked under Tony Dungy and then went to Minnesota. So in both instances, the fan base was shocked. And it's worked that pretty well. Uh, you know, and arguably, Mike Tomlin, when he came out, was the hottest defensive coordinator there is. You put him with Dick LeBeau, mm -hmm. how much defensive knowledge is there on this step? Third down and one. And trying to get that hard yard is Jonathan Dwyer. And I think they're going to be short. Putting the ball down at the 30-yard line, so Tomlin takes a longer look at it and then sends in the punting group on fourth and one. Okay, came a lot to Arthur Jones right here. Sat backside. They did not trust that the play was going to go front side and of course the Steelers off the field. And Jacoby Jones makes a fair catch, so Pittsburgh after that opening thrust. Nothing happening. 10-7 Baltimore. Patrick's show with a new home weekday mornings from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time on the NBC Sports Network. So it's fun going on with Dan. He gets paid to do that, huh? Go down to his basement, goof around a little bit. Yeah. That's good. From the 28 yard line on first down, Bolden, eight of seven, Will Allen making the stop. There's the oversized helmet being worn by Ryan Clark, who has sustained concussions in two of the last three games. Yeah, and uh, but he had to be cleared by an independent neurologist, so you know it must be all good. It, if he were my son, I might recommend against it, but mm -hmm. apparently the doctor said he's a go. Second down and three. And slanting over the right side is Ray Rice for a first down. We go to Michelle. Well, Ryan Clark told me that larger helmet, he does not like the look of it. He called it ugly. But he's decided that uh, substance is better than style in this case. He wants to be safe. It's also lined with this Kevlar that James Harrison also has. But in order to accommodate this, they had to give him an even larger helmet. It's a size too big. If it gets awkward, they've got another helmet down here without the Kevlar. Should he get uncomfortable, Al? Right, thank you, Michelle. From the 39-yard line, here is Rice. And Clark, of course, is the guy who has that sickle cell trait that precludes his playing at altitude, meaning he doesn't play in Denver. As was the case on opening night this year. A little bit earlier we talked about Marshall Yonda cutting Casey Hampton. Watch this. You want to play nose tackle? That's what you get. And still Casey Hampton made the play. This is the nastiness of this rival. That's a legal block. There's nothing wrong with that. Except you make a lot of people mad. Second and ten. What do you think of that rule? It is the number one rule in the NFL, bar none, that makes defensive players crazy. It really is. The fact that, you know, with all the safety issues, all the things you can do, offensive coaches will tell you you will never be able to run the football if you can't chop the knees of the adjacent defensive linemen. And so it's gone back and forth in the league many times, but they've never outlawed it. Third and ten from the 39-yard line. Matt Flacco has time, and here's Bolden spinning away from two defenders and picking up the first down. Anquan Bolden in his 10th year in the league, got away from Ike Taylor, got away from Lawrence Timmons. Two big names in a gain of 14. This is brilliant. Watch this. He, he's dead. The, the Steelers give you this throw. You're going to do it. The two guys come out and make the tackle. Not that time. That is absolutely awesome. Six catches for Bolden for 52 yards. And now Flacco throws high intended for Torrey Smith. He's done a nice job on Smith tonight. Second and ten. You know what they're doing? They're taking Ryan Clark and running him, whether he's at the line of scrimmage or back, underneath Torrey Smith on almost every play. So he's going to come up underneath here. 
and take away that out cut. So that allows Ike Taylor to play deeper and take away the deep threat. So they're playing this in and out game between Clark and Ike Taylor trying to take away Torrey Smith. Smith does not have a catch tonight. Second and ten from the 48. And Rice. Rice fights his way inside the 45, and that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. And when play resumes, it'll be third down and seven from the 44-yard line for the Baltimore Ravens. Two minutes to the half. Baltimore, 10. Pittsburgh, 7. Time show coming up. The Cowboys, a dramatic overtime win over Cleveland. Brady and the Pats beat the Colts. So they're 7 and 3. Peyton Manning leading the Broncos to a fifth straight win. Bob will check in on the Super Bowl contender. And uncertainty is the new rule for them on the Taylor to halftime show coming up. From the 44 now on third and seven under pressure. The pass has gotten away to Bolden, but he will be tackled two yards shy of the first down. Larry Foote is there to make the stop. Cameron Hayward that time got pressure right in the face of Joe Flacco. Just took his simile right back into him. James Harrison met him on the other side and gently took Joe Flacco to the ground. Sam Cook now for his fourth punt and ninth total in the game. And Pittsburgh will take a timeout with a minute and a half to go. Ray Lewis torn triceps, hopes to be back before the end of the season. Meanwhile, Troy Polamalo fighting that calf strain has played in only two games this season. Both came early, so there in street clothes as Cook comes in to punt. Pittsburgh will get the ball and have one timeout, and Cook's punt will go into the end zone. So they will begin this drive from the 20. Sunday night football being brought to you by Subway restaurants. Our deliciously melty, fresh toasted steak melts are here. By Toyota Care, complimentary on every new Toyota. By Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. And by AT&T, we think possible. Heinz History Center here in downtown Pittsburgh. Featuring the exhibit Gridiron Glory, that's the Pro Football Hall of Fame traveling exhibit in a town that obviously loves its Steelers and one of the great olds. There's Jerome Bettis. The bus is back tonight. They'll be celebrated at halftime here. From the 20 yard line and first down, they run an inside draw to Dwyer and he'll be forced out of bounds after a gain of four yards by Donnell Ellerby. Well, Pittsburgh, the explosive first drive, helped, of course, by the penalty and and then left, which took it in. So two plays plus the penalty. But since then, just two first downs for Mike Tomlin's offense. Which makes the strategy here pretty interesting because you want to give Baltimore the ball back here. How much do you trust left, which on his own end? Second down and six. To the outside, Dwyer, and he's going to get taken down. Setting up third and short. That's LRB making the stop. And again, on third down, where they were converting about half the time, best percentage in the league, and tonight, zip for six. Yeah, and they went back to the huddle there to let this clock run down a little bit. I wonder if Harbaugh considered taking a timeout. Probably not, because if they convert, if they will, if they don't. Third and four. And left with the throw. And that'll move the sticks. And Jericho Country is there to make the catch. Well, that is the second time tonight they have just completely voided a zone. There was nobody in the flat. Corey Graham was the closest one out there as he tries to run underneath that. But you can see that was either I think it was just a mistake. You don't leave somebody that wide open on third and five. 39 seconds now from the 38-yard line. And Leftwich guns it incomplete. Heath Miller, the intended target. It'll be second and 10. There's a lot of good pressure inside, but I'll tell you, this, these inside linebackers for 
the Baltimore Ravens. I think have to be given some credit. You know, Ray Lewis goes out, who's been the heart and soul so much of this football team, and guys like Donnell Ellerby, Jamil McClain stepped in. McClain's making all the signal calls now. You see Ellerby with two broken thumbs. You can imagine trying to play linebacker in this league with two broken thumbs. They're trying to intercept the pass. Yeah. Second and ten. A deep drop by Leftwich. Has to check it down and throws incomplete. I'm talking about Ellerby. There he was to get a hand on it. Yeah, he might have had the interception if his hands were available to him. It went right between his hands. <laughs> He's probably laughing about it a little bit himself. Like, how do you expect me to catch it with two broken thumbs? Comes up, goes right yeah, between yeah, his hands, yeah. and he would have had to bat that sucker in the air about 50 feet to have a chance to fair catch it. <laughs> he what? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Third and ten. Blitz coming, and the pass is underthrown. Tended for Emmanuel Sanders, and the crowd getting a little frustrated. Yeah, they picked up that blitz. They were bringing pressure that time, and so they had it. So now it's really on Emmanuel Sanders to win this one-on-one -on -one battle. They're going to bring some pressure here. Sort of read blitzes on the people staying in the backfield to block, and that's one you've got to hit. Drew Butler. His sixth punt. Fair caught by Jacoby Jones at the 15. And Jones is the difference in this game with that punt return after Pittsburgh coughed the ball up and Baltimore got a field goal and then the punt return, and that's why it's 10 to 7. You know, I I've seen Byron Leftwich missed some throws that don't look to be that hard of throws. We've seen him sort of messing with his arm, his shoulder. He hasn't been getting a lot of attention on the sideline, so it, you think he's okay. They're talking with Charlie Batch. But those are throws that you just don't typically expect an NFL quarterback to miss. Leftwich in the half is 7 of 17 for 85 yards. and. Baltimore will head to the locker room after a Flacco kneel down. So we've played 30 minutes in this intense rivalry. And the Baltimore Ravens lead the Pittsburgh Steelers by a score of 10 to 7. With Baltimore getting the second half kickoff. Coming up next with the halftime show. After these messages from your NBC station. Halftime. Baltimore 10. Pittsburgh 7. Beautiful shot of downtown Pittsburgh, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. So Baltimore doing nothing on the ground and through the year 116 to 78. Total yards about even and Pittsburgh had that one turnover which Baltimore cashed in for three points. But the Jacoby Jones run back is the difference in the game. As Baltimore tries to go two games up on Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh win, and they would be tied for first place. In the AFC North, as the second half begins, Jones a couple of yards in, out past the 20, and another good run back for Jacoby Jones out to the 31. Let's go to Michelle. Well, I spoke with Jim Harbaugh, and he said after the Steelers scored that first touchdown on their opening drive, his defense settled down. Now, they've only run for 20 yards, but he said we're going to keep on running the ball. We've got to get our offense going. But emphatically, he said, we have got to complete passes. As for Mike Tomlin, he said, well, this is the kind of game we expected. It's grimy and ugly. He said special teams needs to even the score. I asked him about Leftwich out. He said he's fine, but running back Isaac Redmond is out with a concussion. All right, thank you, Michelle. So Redmond out, Leftwich in the half with 7 of 17. Flacco hands the ball off to Rice. And Rice for a game of 8, which is big news tonight for him because he was 10 for 13 yards prior to that 8-yard run. Misdirection that time. Fullback goes this way. Rice goes that way. Just try and give him a little curveball. <laughs> Watch Rice with these jump cuts in there. You know, he can make a 7-yard run. Think you're watching a show. <laughs> Second and short, and this is Rice, and he gets stood up as he reaches the 40-yard line and is very close to a first down.
Walt Anderson eyes the sideline, then moves the ball back a few inches, and it's going to be a third okay. down. <laughs> right. I'm sure that John Harbaugh is thinking, say what? Yeah. It was right on the line. It looked like a first down, and then he moved it back. Third and inches. Get Baltimore playing without Dennis Pitta. Done for the night. Go double tight end here. And Rice is going to get stuck. Lamar Woodley, the first guy there. So after he reels off eight, he gets a yard and a half, and then he is stopped for no gain, and it's fourth down. Ziggy Hood, Lamar Wood Woodley, look at this jam up in here. That is Woodley just took him straight backwards in the... Same trend we saw in the first half. Neither team being able to run the football. Carries over to the second half now. Sam Cook to punt. Emmanuel Sanders sets up at his own 15-yard line. And Sanders makes the fair catch at the 15. Yeah, the Pittsburgh offense can get something going. Plot line tomorrow, a showdown for the world's only powers, Revolution. Tomorrow night featuring the music of Led Zeppelin. Tomorrow at 10 Eastern and Pacific 9 Central at Mountain Time here on NBC. So the Steelers with their first possession of the second half. And they start with Mindenhall up to the 19. So Pittsburgh got off to the blazing start. Touchdown, two plays plus the penalty. But then a fumble which set up a field goal and then six consecutive drives ending in punts gonna hurry the pace here a little bit going no huddle on second down and six and chugging his way for a gain of about four is Mendenhall again has played very little this year with the knee surgery coming off of that plus the Achilles issue it'll be third and two Terrell Suggs going to squeeze this thing down inside. Almost miraculous that he's even playing football out here after the Achilles surgery that he went through. He didn't even know he did it. When he did it, he thought he just sprained his ankle. The, the grass slipped or something. So it was just devastating when he went to the doctor. And the doctor told him it would be 12 months before he could play again. Said he didn't even remember driving home from there. But he was thinking, no way, 12 months. Third and two. And Leftwich going deep. Sanders to make the catch to the Baltimore 39-yard line. Going deep on third and two. And Sanders for a gain of 37. First of all, going to double team on the outside, make sure that Suggs is under control on Mike Adams' side. But you're going to see the safety come up. That's Ed Reed. They're in that quarter's coverage, and the one play that's always there, if you can figure out on the fly that it's that quarter's coverage, is the post. Maybe they take advantage of Corey Graham. This is Jonathan Dwyer. Gaining one, second down and nine. Go back to that prior play here, and you'll see the right down there come up with the safety. You're going to bring one safety down the line of scrimmage, and then Ed Reed's trying to jump the underneath route, opening up that post. Looks like some kind of strange miscommunication back there. Second and nine. Third down and eight. Well, you're talking about strange miscommunication. Reed involved in that, Chris, and you wonder at this point in his career, he's been around a long time, 11 years, still regarded as one of the best, but at what point does your reputation exceed your performance? Well, they still need him on that back end, trying to get everything organized, especially without Ray Lewis in there. And he's still very big play capable. You know, like a lot of great players, I think occasionally they get beat trying to do too much. Troy Polamalu on occasion is just going to flat out guess from his film study, and sometimes they get caught. Third and eight. And Leftwich guns it, and it's intercepted by Corey Graham. And Graham 
will take it out to the 39-yard line. Corey Graham with a big pick as Leftwich gunned it over the middle. And you got a scrum going on on the Baltimore sideline. Keith Miller is there. The tackle Adams is there. And Leftwich goes back to his sideline. Roethlisberger can only look on after the interception by the former Bear, Graham. Corey Graham with a big time interception against Byron Leftwich and really just sort of fooled him into thinking he was going to settle underneath in the underneath coverage, cut off the Steelers receiver and then undercut him. You expect for the most part that underneath coverage to not drop back. But Corey Graham fooled Leftwich and got it. First down, that pass is caught by Anquan Bolden. So right off the bat, they take it to the 39-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Keenan Lewis again is going to get a full dose here of Anquan Bolden. They ran James Harrison underneath the out. So now the adjustment's made, and they're coming back inside. And they go quickly on the snap. And that is the right part pointing to his helmet, that oversized helmet as he makes the tackle there on right, second and five. Well, I tell you, Ryan Clark has really stepped up without Troy Polamalu in the lineup. Watch him come fill this inside out. A guy that's had two concussions in the last three weeks in. Kevlar, got it. Don't worry about it. Game of four, he comes out of the game now, it's second down and six. And off the play fake, going to Bolden, and he is double covered there. It'll be third down. Allen and Lewis on the coverage. Well, if you want to know why they're going to Bolden so much, we'll show you the other side of the field. Ike Taylor going up, up against Torrey Smith. And he has been on him. That was the switch that they made. They determined that Torrey Smith, the bigger threat, they wanted to take him out of the game with their best corner. And so far, it has worked. Often, they'll double team him with the guy underneath. Ryan Clark, more often than not, strategy working so far for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Taylor pitching a shutout against Smith. Third and six. Bronco has to check it down underneath, and he hits Rice, and Rice spins away and gets the first down. Laying around Larry Foote, takes it to the 27, first down. Well, this is a play that took a little while to develop, and let's give Michael Orr, the left tackle, a little credit for handling James Harrison, and then it's Ray Rice, and there's just really not any way in the world that Larry Foote is going to be able to stay with Ray Rice coming down the middle of the field where he can break either way. Too much to ask if he's given that much time. From the 27-yard line. Flacco going to his tight end, Ed Dixon. To the 20 he goes. So this drive set up by the Graham interception. Corey Graham playing a lot more than they thought. He was acquired basically to help improve the special teams, but with the injuries to Ladarius Webb, to Jimmy Smith, He's playing a lot more, had three picks last year, has one tonight, five for his career. And a veteran guy that really sort of set Leftwich up there. I, I didn't think he was going to back underneath that coverage either. It looked like he was the underneath guy and fooled him. And Brett Kiesel in there, had a great game, got the tip of the game winning interception last week. And Flacco throwing, and the pass is incomplete. Lewis is right there covering Bolden. Making it third down and four. One of the problems that Antoine Bolden has, he's not a speedster by any means. So Keenan Lewis now deciding, let's just get up and see if he can run by me one time. And I kind of like his odds a little bit better in the bump and run. Other side, Mike Taylor, Torrey Smith. Mike Taylor's having a nice game. Very good. Terrific, in fact. Mm -hmm. Third and four. Three by one again to get one on one with Torrey Smith at the top of your screen. We'll break out of that just for the moment. Now come back to a three by one. And rolling to that side is Flacco on the floor. And it's Jones there and complete. Lewis covering on the play, making it fourth down, and in comes the field goal group. I tell you, Keenan Lewis is stepping up his game here as well. They got him a few times the first half, but 
Jacoby Jones can run too, and he's right there on third down to force the field goal attempt. But I tell you, when you're the other cornerback, we see it so many times, get a lot of balls thrown your way until you can prove they shouldn't be doing it. 39-yard attempt, Justin Tucker. It's harder kicking to the open end of the field, but there's almost no wind at all tonight. And Tucker's kick is good after he had missed one earlier. Good 39. And the Ravens are up by six in Pittsburgh. Thursday night, we kick off a new Thanksgiving tradition on NBC. At the Meadowlands, the Patriots taking on the Jets on Sunday Night Football Thanksgiving special. Football Night in America will begin at 8 Eastern time. John Madden will also be making an appearance via tape. We'll bring back, uh, there it is, the, the old six-legged turkey. It's a duck, it's a duck, it's a duck. So, players of the game, get ready. John Madden is judging you, baby. Chris Rainey from three yards in the end zone. And that Baltimore special teams unit just continues to do its job as they have all season long. Six-point game. At Palisades Park in New Jersey, they used to have a ride called the Loop-de-Loop. -loop. We have our own Loop-de-Loop -loop here. He does. He's got a big motion, and it was interesting talking to him about it. And he said, you know, I didn't have a quarterback coach to teach me how to throw when I was growing up. He said, we just threw rocks, and that's kind of the motion you use to throw rocks. And he's carried it right into about a 10-year career in the National Football League. From the 16-yard line on first down. As the catch is made in the 12-yard line, Bernard Pollard takes care of Mendenhall. Again, to set the importance of this game, if Baltimore wins, they're up by two. Huge. If Pittsburgh wins, they're tied for the top spot. They don't have the tiebreak. And we saw what that meant last year. They both finished 12-4. and four. Baltimore had home field except for the New England game. Pittsburgh got Tebowed. Yeah, they sure did. And I, this game is just setting up to me to be another one of those finishes. But at some point now, Leftwich is going to have to prove that he can work this ball down the field and get the passing game going. Second and 14. That's Jack and Dwyer. And Dwyer breaking tackles. They might start screaming bus here in a minute. Is that what the bus used to do, that little thing around his helmet? Maybe he's trying to take on the persona here. He's stuck. This this is not going to be a first down. He picks up the final four yards after contact. One of the top guys in the league as far as after contact yardage. And here you're going to see it. He gets drilled. Still picks it up. On first down for the 27. Now again. the 35. Talking about these two teams and the, the rivalry, they had the same record in 2009. They had, they both finished 12 and 4 in 10 and in 11. And this year the Ravens come in 7 and 2. Pittsburgh comes in 6 and 3. And again, that speaks to what we talked about. Only one team can win the division. The other, no matter what your record is, as was the case with Pittsburgh last year, you become a wild card and you go on the road as they did at Denver. Dwyer again for the 45-yard line. So Jonathan Dwyer, like Tomlin describing him to us last month, is a guy who's had Bettis-like tendencies. Sure does. And if just keep trying to jump inside here, there are going to be big holes. But for Dwyer, he has a little bit of that Bettis quality to him as defenses wear down in the second half. Sometimes those big backs can be really effective, and it's like they're staying with the hot hand. He needs a breather. Mendenhall comes back in. And Mendenhall with his sixth carry of the night. It's a gain of four to the 49. You know, the one thing about Pittsburgh, no matter how much success they've had over the past few years, including the Super Bowl victory in 08, the, the knock on them has always been the offensive line. 
Yeah, and, you know, it has a chance to end up being a real strength because David Castro, the first-round draft pick, is hurt, but more than likely he'll be coming back. Marcus Gilbert, um, second-round pick a year ago, is going to be getting healthy soon. So they're going to have essentially seven starters to pick from here pretty soon. Second and six. Now Leftwich will swing it out. That's a backward pass to Mendenhall. And Mendenhall comes close to picking up the first down. Well, this is what you're hoping for out of Richard Mendenhall here. Charles Suggs got a semi-horse collar on that one. Grabs a jersey and then lets it go. So the officials let it go. It was definitely a tug. He ends up just short of the first down, so that not being called could be significant here. It was into the books as a run because it was a backward pass, so it's third down and a short one. Batch is the tailback, and they give it to him, and he'll pick up the first down as he gets to the 42. So Redmond is done for the night. You got Mendenhall, you got Dwyer, and now you got Batch, and we go to Michelle. Well, these two teams will play again in two weeks, and I spoke to Ben Roethlisberger before the game. He said he's expecting to undergo further evaluation of his injuries this week, Al. He hopes then he'll have an indication of when he can practice again. Right now he has no idea what the timetable is. I asked him how he feels physically, just standing here on the sidelines. He said it doesn't feel good, and emotionally he said awful any night but this one. Thank you, Michelle. So he's going to miss tonight, obviously, maybe Cleveland next week, and then as you say, in Baltimore in two weeks. Off play action. Leftwich fires, finds the open man at the 21 yard line, and that is Emmanuel Sanders, and a flag comes in at the end on the hit by Reed. This is the same play they hit on some big third downs in the game against Kansas City last week. Really just basically a two man route. And Sanders coming across the field, and it looked like Ed Reed. The discussion is, was that helmet to helmet? Personal foul, unnecessary rushes, number 20, defense. Back to this is for the goal, first down. Go with the play action fake, and you're going to get the deep crosser in here. Linebackers don't react quite quickly enough. You can see Ed Reed was chasing the post and wheeled back around. And there's no doubt it was helmet to helmet. So it's a 20 yard gain, it's an 11 yard penalty. Miller on Suggs there. Dwyer is the running back, out of the shotgun from the 11 yard line on first down. And Leftwich. To the corner of the end zone and swatted away, intended for Cotchery. Corey Graham get his hand on it, and it'll be second down and ten. Boy, that's a nice play by Corey Graham. They tried to pick him on the inside, but they don't get him. And he fights his way through that pick, just like you'd have to in basketball. Gets his head. That's just a tremendous football play right there. Corey Graham has really stepped up in this game with some of the injuries they've got on the outside. Big time, second down and 10, minute and a half to go in the quarter. This drive began back at the Pittsburgh 16. This is the 10th play. Before they can get it off. Gonna go against the Steelers. This is the first charge timeout, Baltimore. Uh, threw a flag, but they took the timeout before the snap. Timeout Baltimore. It said timeout Baltimore. We were trying to figure out why, and then he corrected it. was a timeout call by Pittsburgh before the play clock ran down. So it's second down and 10 from the 11 yard line. Tenth play of the drive. And the handoff goes to Dwyer. Great series for him. Inside the five to the three. Third and short upcoming. Hey, there's been a great battle going on inside all night with the center Marquise Pouncey going up against Maake Kimuatu. He just pulls him out of there on that one. Boy, it's tough. You watch him and 
He is just one of those tenacious, works every down, never gives up on a block. As good as there is in the game playing center. Third and two, final minute of the quarter. And the play clock going down again, oh, and they're going to have to burn another timeout. So Pittsburgh will go down the stretch with only one timeout remaining. Pittsburgh having to take two timeouts in the last 46 seconds. A third and two upcoming against the Baltimore defense, 27th in the league, as we mentioned at the top, but best in the league in the red zone. No touchdowns allowed in the last eight red zone drives, trying to make it nine, trying to limit them to a field goal. Third and two. Dwyer is the back. And he will fade in the corner of the end zone. No, he's out of bounds. Mike Wallace. Graham with the coverage on the play, and Williams is there too. So he's out of bounds, and it will be fourth down. Ran the old pick play. Jericho Cotri on the outside is going to set the edge, and they're going to wheel to the outside. Really had it. You can see Kerry Williams couldn't get there, but just didn't leave enough football field. Oh, boy, he really had a chance to get those feet down. At that moment, you've got to, he made such a great catch a week ago against Kansas City and just never got his feet timed out on that one. 22-yarder by Sweezum is good. 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Three-point game. And setting up for another typical Baltimore Pittsburgh finish. Uh, you know, it, it really is. And now you have to wonder. Those are huge mistakes, though, to burn those two timeouts at this point in the game. Especially now you're still trailing. You're going to possibly need it. You're probably going to have to kick into the open end to win the game with a field goal. Baltimore on top. They would take a two game lead and have a victory in Pittsburgh in hand. Or. In effect, Pittsburgh would be in first place, even though they both be seven and three by virtue of winning this one. Bengals getting hot again, five and five, and the Browns losing in Dallas today, two and eight. These games really are something, though. No matter what you think, and boy, the offenses can be coming in and high flying, and you know the the Ravens set a team record for most points scored a week ago. But you knew, you know, no Troy Polamalu, okay, it's the defense that doesn't matter. When these two teams play, it's going to come down to the wire. There are going to be special teams played, plays made like the ones Jacoby Jones made earlier on the punt return, and it's going to be decided in the fourth quarter. Well, that's the only Baltimore touchdown of the night on the punt return by that man. Reason's kick is a ground ball. It's dropped and then picked up at the 18-yard line. And it's Anthony Allen running it back. And Anthony Allen staying alive. And he's a running back by trade plan on special teams. Finally stopped by Brown out at the 36-yard line. Smith and Taylor tonight. And this one's been won to this point by Swaggin, Mike Taylor. Yeah, it really has been, and you get the feeling if the Ravens are going to get something going on the offensive side, at some point you've got to at least take a shot with Torrey Smith, but I think because of the game they're playing with running Ryan Clark out underneath, it's allowing Ike Taylor to play a little bit off, and so you never really get the feel as to whether or not you can take your shot to get a deep throw off. From the 36-yard line, they start with Pierce as the running back. To the outside that pass is too tall for Antoine Bolden. And Bolden this time covered by Taylor. Came over to the other side, second and ten. Yeah, that and that may be a little bit of the answer. If you put Torrey Smith in the slot, then Ike Taylor staying outside. Yeah, Ike Taylor is a guy that I think very unfairly takes some heat around Pittsburgh. Whenever he has a bad game, this guy gets the best the other team has to offer every single week, allowing the other guy to take the softer touch, and he takes it sometimes. Been doing it for 10 years. 
Rice up to the 38. Isn't that always the case with a cornerback? I mean, you're always exposed. Even the great ones have their days when they are the subject of every talk radio show the next morning. Well, and, and the most important thing in the NFL is who draws double teams and who can avoid double teams. If Ike Taylor can play one-on-one -on -one coverage against the other team's best receiver, you get help on the rest of the field. Into the third, 13-10, Baltimore. Real coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. A great shot that is from downtown Pittsburgh across the Allegheny River looking into PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And back we come to Heinz Field. Al Michaels with Chris Collinsworth and Michelle Defoya. Sunday night football to the fourth quarter. Third and eight for the Ravens from their own 38-yard line. Oh, James Harrison slipping around in the middle like he's going to get a running start on this blitz. And Flacco will go down after pump faking. Down at the 30-yard line on a sack by Woodley. Mark Woodley's going to come all the way around this side, but you saw all the games inside. James Harrison came off the edge and then the other way, and that is a great sign of Harrison and Woodley can get going again. That's only their fifth sack of the season after averaging 22 and a half the last four years between them. And Pittsburgh's first sack in the game. Cook's punt. Fielded the 23-yard line. And Emmanuel Sanders brings it back to the 30-yard line. Thirty-nine seconds into the fourth quarter. A look at some of the numbers, and of course the, the two defenses tonight. Flacco 18 of 29, but only 153. And left which 11 of 24, so under 50% with the one pick. But I tell you, with the way that Dwyer got the running game going that last series, you saw then it set up the play action for Leftwich, and that's what the Ravens have been unable to do tonight is get their running game going. So I would imagine they're going to stick with this run and see if they can set up their pass again. Well, they've rushed for 114 yards against the Ravens in three quarters. Instead, they go to the air on first down, and they swing it out to Mendenhall. And Mendenhall will be tackled just short of the first down by Danelle Ellerby. Now, this is a team that's so tough to try and run outside against the Baltimore Ravens. So now what the Steelers are countering with is bringing Mendenhall into the game and just swinging him out of the backfield. This is the second time in two straight series that we've seen that. And so it's effectively a pitch, a run play, only they're doing it out of the passing game. Second and one. time swings it back and picks up a first down at the 43 yard line well there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with Mendenhall's Achilles now he was look like he's on dancing with the stars on this one he's all over the place and then it's Bernard Pollard who is really becoming a little Troy Polamalu like for the Baltimore Ravens he's down a lot more getting some sacks set that edge on that one Throws underneath, and that's caught by Wallace up at the 44-yard line. And we've been looking at left, which uh, all night long, you know, sometimes hunched over, grabbing for the shoulder. Same thing here. Watch Kruger now. He's going to get double teamed by both bats and still manage to fight his way through there. And left, which again, looking really uncomfortable after whatever contact was made there. Mm -hmm. First start for him since 09. He has not won a game as a starter since 06. He is not coming out of this game, though, is he? No. Charlie Batch is the backup. Second and eight. Rolling, getting chased, and then he just scoops the ball out of bounds. No grounding it here outside the pocket, so it's third down and eight. He's really looking uncomfortable, though. I don't know exactly what it is that's going on with him, but 
You can see him sort of grab that side again. It just looks like he's moving a little bit gingerly now. And this is when they need to start. Yeah, there's Charlie Batch warming up on the sideline. And you just wonder, Mike Tomlin's seeing the same thing we're seeing. Third and eight. A low snap. Avoids the sack for the moment, then dumps it off to Dwyer. And Jonathan Dwyer reaching for what might be a first down. Paul Kruger came in, almost had the sack. They're not going to give him the spot that he thought he'd gotten. And there's uh, Leftwich looking uncomfortable again. This is brilliant. I, I mean, this is as good as you get. He, he escapes Kruger and then does like a jump shot over the top, and he gets the thing to Dwyer. And I thought Dwyer had this first down, but we'll see. I didn't see his knee go down. I thought he would have been given the full lunge there. Yeah. I didn't see any contact before that ball crossed the yellow line, at least on our screen. Well, the crowd doesn't like the spot. That is a challengeable play if Mike Tomlin wants to challenge. Yes. One of the problems is, one of the problems is, they only have one timeout left. So if Tomlin, he's got the flag in his hand, oh. now the timeouts come into question as well. But you have to take that. This is huge. Ooh. Well, either that or you just go for it on fourth. And the crowd's looking at it again. Now you're going to... Just hope if you throw the challenge flag, if you lose the challenge, you're out of timeouts. And Tomlin figures it, it looks good enough for he, him to challenge it. So we'll see if they pick up the first down after Walt Pittsburgh Anderson is goes challenging under the, the ruling on the field that the runner was short on the line of the game. The answer when we come back. All right, we're waiting for the answer here. This is going to be extremely close. And we'll show you the replay, obviously. Here it is again. Now, it's when his elbow goes down. Where is the ball when his elbow goes down? Re remember, the officials cannot look at this with the yellow line. The elbow's down. The yellow line, as you know, well, we've told you a million times, is unofficial. So, is he, he's inside the 48 just barely. Another look from this angle, and that's exactly where the sticks are. So that's where they're going to mark the ball. Left elbow down, where the ball is at that point. Again, Anderson can't see the yellow line. He then has to determine exactly where he's going to place the ball and then bring the sticks back out into the middle of the field. Yeah, I think it's obvious with the yellow line that it was a first down. But, again, we have looked at this from a lot of different angles, and without the benefit of that yellow line, it is much tougher to discern exactly where that ball should be spotted. So if, if they lose the challenge, it's fourth down in a couple of inches, and they would be out of timeouts. Otherwise, it's a first down, and he'd still have his timeout. Replay booth. We're being told by our producer, Fred Gidelli, they've frozen it right there. So Anderson, without the yellow line, has to place the ball at that spot. Here we go. After reviewing the play, the runner's forward progress was the 47 and a half yard line. We will spot the ball at that point and remeasure. You know, it's unbelievable on something this inexact. I mean, now he's basically going to go out there and say 47 and a half, which is right about here. And they moved it up about a half a yard and probably now gives him the first down. But I think they actually get it right at the end of the day, but not by much. <laughs> we'll see. This is going to be like one or two links either way here. Well, here we go. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Could it be any closer? Took some guts to challenge that one. It does. But it paid off big time. Will not be charged with a timeout. We've seen Tomlin going for it on fourth down on more than one occasion this year. Glad he doesn't have to here. Right.
Salute to Red Cashin. First down. From the, from the 47 and a half. We know exactly where it is right now. They're on a draw with Mendenhall picking up a hard yard and a half to the 46 yard line. All right, now we're getting Bernard Pollard coming up, creeping around, helping on the line of scrimmage against the run, which means that on the outside now, you are going to have Mike Wallace with one-on-one -on -one coverage opportunities that he really has not had much tonight. So let's see. Let's follow along with Pollard now. Are they going to play pass? Are they going to play run? Well, it looks like they're backed up a little bit after having success against the run on first down. Second and nine, down the right sideline, and out of bounds was Will Johnson. Sent a fullback down the sideline, covered by Courtney Upshaw, third and nine. I'll tell you, we have seen Courtney Upshaw play just about everywhere for the Baltimore Ravens. A week ago, he was out there playing nose tackle and everything else, and now here he comes, feet out of bounds. Nice job. You know, Upshaw is one of those guys. He's kind of tweener and a lot of things, but well coached, and he has taken on a big role for a young player in this league. Second round pick from Arizona. Third down and nine. From Alabama. As down goes Leftwich on a sack by Haloti Mata. Bothered by a shoulder injury, suited last week, but didn't play at all. And I think that's uh, the first time in a while we've called his name tonight. Well, they're bringing the blitz, and he had to come through. Max Starks had to handle Suggs on the outside, and he really kind of didn't either. He was stuck between and betwixt and decided that he couldn't get to either one of them, I guess. Fourth and 19, and back to the 12-yard line is Doss running this one back. Up to the 19th. Want to make sure you know that Upshaw went to Alabama. Gotcha. Number two in the country to you know, the national championship. Three-point game, 10-13. Left in the fourth. That include Mike Ditka. We want to send our best to Mike, who many of you know suffered a minor stroke a couple of days ago. He appears to be doing very well as Ray Rice takes it out to the 24-yard line. A little pressure starting to get there now. We're seeing Lamar Woodley, who's been playing much better of late, starting to have a little bit of impact on the game. This is the old-style Pittsburgh Steelers, where if you couldn't block these two outside linebackers, you couldn't win. Woodley's starting to crank up the heat a little. Good pressure that time. Second and six, Rice to the outside. Right. Set up a big third down and two. Tackled there by Cameron Hayward. Well, this is what the Kansas City Chiefs had great success with last week, this stretch play. But so far tonight, Ray Rice just unable to get anything going. 15 carries for 28 yards before that one. And because of that, the passing game, the play action, just hasn't been there. Averaging two yards of carry tonight is Rice. Third and two. Four-man rush. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Jones. Covered by Lewis. The punt. Yeah, hey, you've got to give Keenan Lewis some credit. Up here at the top of the screen, since he has moved up and started playing bump and run all over the field, he has really been effective. He's been able to take out Bolden. He's been able to take out Jacoby Jones. It's a key part of this game so far. Sam Cook, his seventh kick of the night. Sanders. Collects it at the 21-yard line. It's a four-yard return to the 25-yard line with eight and a half to go in regulation. Ravens by three. Tomorrow on The Voice, the top ten have been chosen, and now their fate is in the voters' hands. The Voice, tomorrow and Tuesday, at 8 Eastern and Pacific, right here on NBC. From the 25-yard line, a three-point game. 
Leftwich winding up and throwing to the outside, and that will be caught by Cotchery, and it will be enough for a first down. Well, you're looking at the strength of Byron Leftwich right there. They thought they were going to do more of these mirrored routes, which is basically the same sort of out cuts or whatever on the outside of the field. And it takes a huge arm. But I tell you, every time Leftwich makes a throw like that, he comes up like he's in great pain. And I don't think Mike Tomlin cares. Like, you know, hey. Obviously. <laughs> care. Yeah, when Bash was warming up, he had his uh, wool hat on. From the 36-yard line, left which is now 15 of 30 for 183. And scooting his way forward is Dwyer, who looked like he was stopped after a gain of three or four, and turns out to be a couple more than that. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Al and Chris, I can tell you that as much as Leftwich has been wincing and looking hurt the entire time he was on the bench before returning to the field, no attention from the athletic trainers, no attention from the medical staff, nothing at all. Well, Michelle, I think the, the training staff is used to a little drama with their quarterbacks here, aren't they? <laughs> Second and three from the 43. Goes Dwyer again, and again with that hard running, he gains so much of his yardage after contact, as did, of course, Mr. Bettis, first down. I, I, this is just all guts and, and Pittsburgh Steeler fight and Jerome Bettis courage. I, you know, I love watching this guy play. We saw him in Cincinnati have the big game, and... He is just a Pittsburgh Steeler kind of back. They, they played the highlights of Jerome Bettis during halftime. The place went crazy like it was just happening. 12 carries, 55 yards for Dwyer. The ball at the 48-yard line. This is Mendenhall. Game of three. The ball now in Baltimore territory as we tick down to six and a half to go. Now they're starting to get a little of this action going now. One of the things that's working is this sort of counter OT play where they're pulling the backside fullback and tight ends and tackles around. And they're attacking the defensive right side now of the Ravens. And they're starting to get, you know, three, four, five yards a clip. And pretty soon they'll be able to use that play action pass again. Well, averaging 104 through week 10 tonight, 135 against this Baltimore defense. And six, backpedaling and then throwing incomplete. Tended from Mendenhall. Pollard was there. Third down and six. Yeah, it's unfortunate when you get man coverage on a screenplay. That time Bernard Pollard is just sitting right out here, and that's his guy. So he comes out on the screen, and he's just standing right beside him. Good job by left, which is dumping it into the ground. From the 49, the Roethlisberger looking on third and six. To the outside, Miller reaching, trying to get the first down. It's going to be close. Ellerby covering on the play. Spot the ball at a point where Mike Tomlin comes over and says, I'll help you out. It's a first down. Well, that time you had Heath Miller in the backfield, and then... The coverage coming from Ellerby on the outside, does he get it? I think he does. So that yellow line is becoming more and more friendly to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ellerby, as well as he runs, was unable to get to Heath Miller on that one. Spotted at the 42. He's done a good job on Miller tonight. Only two catches for the tight end for 22 yards. Mendenhall stepping over Suggs with Bennett hit by Ellerby. Stop shy of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think Suggs has seen enough of this running game. Watch this one. He's going to come shoot and hit the puller right in his kneecap. Just completely destroyed to play. Mendenhall was able to hurdle over the top. But Suggs has seen enough of that sort of crackback stuff from Willie Colon coming across the field. This is the time of the game when star players like Terrell Suggs tend to take over. Keep an eye on Kruger as well. He's been a difference maker tonight. Second and 11. Good protection. Passes one hot. Incomplete by Wallace. Third and 11. 
And I don't know if he's hurting or not, but that's a big miss. You just can't put that any other way. This is great protection. Plenty of time to wind up, step into the throw, and one-hop it. You know, it looked like Wallace actually could have made a little bigger effort to come scoop that thing up. This is a bigger play than would otherwise normally be because of the timeout situation. Give the ball back to Baldwin when they can only stop it once. Third and 11, and look out, he gets sacked big time by James Ahedabo. James Ahedabo hasn't even been in there that much tonight. All of a sudden comes in on a safety blitz and sacks him. They just brought too many guys to this side. They got three, and Ahedabo is going to loop down inside once the two other blockers are occupied. And Leftwich just didn't pick it up. So they're forced to punt on a fourth and 18. Kobe Jones goes to the fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line. And now Baltimore can begin to go to work on the clock as they go to work on Leftwich on the sideline. Leftwich up and walking around. Went to commercials, saw him on the bench. Batch was warming up. The first things first, that Pittsburgh defense has to get a three and out with his clock situation right now. And finally, Torrey Smith makes a catch, takes it to the 20-yard line, his first catch of the night, and we go back to the head of a sack. Well, you're going to see they've got three linemen sliding this way. They should have had these three picked up, but Willie Colon in the middle there takes the inside guy, does not realize the outside pressure is coming. Remember, this is his first year at guard, and they just miscalculated on that protection, and Byron Leftwich paid a heavy price for it. Second down and three. Rice. And Rice appears to have the first down. And again, with that situation with just one timeout plus the two-minute warning, that is a huge first down. Yeah, and they're one timeout or one first down away from ending this thing here. And Ray Rice, who hasn't really gotten anything going at all, it's his time now. Ravens taking all the time they need now before snapping it. We'll be under three minutes. First and ten at the 24-yard line. Rice again to the 25, and a flag comes in. Tripping, number 50, defense, 10-yard penalty. First down. Ooh, Larry Foote, after they stopped him, foot with a penalty and a first down. Foote's going to shoot the gap here, and he is going to swing his legs around. I'm not sure he made too much contact, but he definitely was trying. I don't know if you can get called for trying to trip, but a tough call. Not to the 35, and all. Polamalo can do his watch along with Roethlisberger. From the 35-yard line. Here's Rice. Rice up to the 39-yard line. So does Pittsburgh want to take its time out here on this side of the two-minute warning? Well, regardless of where they take the time out, this is it. They cannot allow another first down. So much on the line in this game for Baltimore to come in here and basically have one touchdown on a punt return and beat Pittsburgh in their house. Huge ramifications all around the AFC. Second and seven. Twice again. Simply will run to the right to the 39-yard line. It's going to be third down. And now Pittsburgh, does. do they get the timeout before the two-minute warning clock ticks down? They try to call timeout on the front side of it. And Walt Anderson is going to have a conference about when they called it. Tomlin was trying to get it. This is the third and final timeout, Pittsburgh. The timeout was called at 2.04. Please reset the game clock 
the 204. All right, their last timeout. Then it will stop at the two minute warning. So clearly, what the Steelers have to do is stop them on this play. Well, we started the night by calling it four quarters of fury, maybe even overtime with these guys. Who knows? It's Baltimore and it's Pittsburgh. And we've been seeing this for a number of years, Chris. It's as good as it gets for my money. It really is. And I've been in a part of this game for long enough to know now that everybody on the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is saying, keep your eyes on Ray Rice. This is the moment where you have to cover Ray Rice out of the backfield, maybe a run, maybe a pass. He is the guy you have to protect against first here. Third and seven as we go to the two-minute warning after this play. You get a flag. It may have been an offside. Flacco is going to go down. But it might have been Keesel. I couldn't tell on the I, I think it was line. Woodley, too. I thought Woodley jumped it. If it is offside, it's going to be third down and two. Offside, number 99, defense. The five-yard penalty is still third down. And, this is the and now it's warning. a two-minute warning. Right. That's that, a key right there, so it doesn't they, get to stop. Exactly. It's going to cost them 40 there seconds even if they stop them. Two guys offsides on a veteran football team. Third and two when we come back. so big in two ways. Number one, it turns a third and seven to a third and two. They get a first down, the game's over. Even if they don't get the first down, they can run almost all of the time off the 40-second clock. So by the time Pittsburgh gets the ball, it'll be down at 115, 110, somewhere in that neighborhood. So a huge penalty committed by the Steelers' defense. Third and two. It comes down to does the game end here? Does Pittsburgh have one last gasp? This is the first charge timeout, Baltimore, 30 seconds timeout. And then Baltimore takes a timeout. Yeah, I think they were looking at personnel, wanted to see what Pittsburgh was going to run out there. And of course, now Dick LeBeau has the option of going elsewhere. It's the one thing the Ravens were hoping to do is drag this thing into the fourth quarter because the Steelers don't substitute a lot. Thought they had a chance to wear this defense down, but. The Steelers defense hasn't worn down at all. They haven't allowed a touchdown yet in this one. As usual, Wendy's postgame report will be coming up next. Michelle with an interview. Bob, Tony, and Mike breaking it down. We'll take a look at Thanksgiving night ahead to the Patriots and the Jets. Mm. Here we go again. Down to the last two minutes with these two teams again. Full throw. Out of the gun on third and two. Four man rush. Flacco oh, is going to get sacked at the 40 yard line. That's Harrison. So they will get the ball back, but now they can take all of the time they want off that play clock and give it to Pittsburgh with a little more than a minute remaining and no timeouts for the Steelers. Well, let's start with the obvious. The back end was completely covered. Flacco decided not to take a chance on throwing the ball. Picked up across the board, and then James Harrison eventually gets home. Good decision, though, not to throw that one. An incomplete pass stops the clock in that situation, so the sack was actually a win. Exactly. Cook, and before he punts, another timeout will be taken with one Charge 12. Timeout. Baltimore, 30-second timeout. Go to Michelle. Well, it appears that uh, he's coming back in, Byron Leftwich. After that sack, he went to the sideline, went to the bench, was surrounded by trainers and medical staff, was evaluated for a rib, I'm told, by the team. But then he popped right back up, got his helmet ready, had a football under his arm, and he was ready to go, Al. 
Michelle, as, as we take a look at some of the hits, and it all started after his touchdown run when he reached for his shoulder. Been in discomfort, taking some shots tonight, as you say, looking at his rib. And now he'll have to go to work and try to get him into field goal range and send the game into overtime. Cook's punt, heading towards Sanders, and he calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 16-yard line. So can Leftwich get them into field goal range for Sweezum? I asked Byron Leftwich how many times he's had the chance to run the two-minute offense since the season started, and he said, what difference does it make? You know, if I get in that situation, I've got to get the job done. That's what I'm paid to do. Here he is. I do know in this town, though, there is a fair percentage of the population that would like to see Charlie Batch in there running this final two-minute offense. Well, he needs to gain about 50 yards to give Sweezum a half-decent chance. This is a tough place to kick field goals, but at least tonight the weather is almost perfect with no wind. From the 16, Leftwich guns it over the middle, and it's incomplete, intended for Emmanuel Sanders, second and 10 with 60 seconds left. And now this is where you get to that blurred line as far as I'm concerned. I, and I'm all for courage, and we know that Leftwich is, wants to play, wants to finish this game. But how healthy are you? Can you make the throws necessary to help the Pittsburgh Steelers win this game? And it, you know, it's always a tough call for a coach and a player. Second and 10. Leftwich will sling its sidearm, and Mendenhall, I don't know why he doesn't go to the sideline there, he gets the first down, but the clock keeps running. Precious seconds being ticked away. At the 28. And Mendenhall's got to go out of bounds there. And Leftwich throws, and and at the 49, it's incomplete, intended for Miller, and it's Corey Graham with another big play, second down, 28 seconds left. You know, Corey Graham has just become a nightmare, sort of lurking in the middle of this field. He already has the interception earlier in the game, and this is going to be completed, and big-time shot and legal shot did not go to the head, which we see so often in those kinds of situations. Corey Graham has had himself some night out here. Mm. Out there simultaneously with the ball, second and ten, the ball at the 28th. And left was throws, and that's going to be dislodged at midfield by Pollard. Contrary, looked like he was going to haul it in, and Pollard, known for big hits, extracted it. Well, here you go, you're going to get it from the inside out, and this is what safeties get paid to do. It was a perfect throw, dropped it right on the money, and Pollard, who has become the hammer on this defense. Without question, Bernard Pollard has become the hammer, and the hammer just dropped one. And with Cotri down on the sideline, an injury timeout. Patrick has to go to the bench, the hit by Pollard. There's no runoff for a five-yard penalty for this, the, what would amount to be the fourth timeout. He, here it is again. He's ready to make the catch in midfield, and Pollard takes care of that. They're already minus Antonio Brown. <laughs> Ray Lewis. You know, you almost have to throw this one down the field, 22 seconds, in order to get a completion and get... The clock stopped. This is almost Hail Mary time. And it's a low snap, and, and Leftwich is able to extend the play, and then he's going to launch one deep downfield and incomplete. Gilreath was down there, so he got 12 seconds left and fourth down. Well, it's a train wreck to start with. They can't get the snap. But to me, more importantly than that, I know Byron Leftwich can throw this ball this far, and he just couldn't in this situation. He gets out, he's going to get himself set up, he's throwing it from the 25-yard line, and he didn't even get close to it. 
So somehow, some way, barring a minor miracle, he's got to get the ball at least to the outside to stop the clock on fourth down. Hangs in there, throws it underneath at the 31. That's Wallace. And now they'll run the old, how many laterals can we get into it play? And it winds up in the hands of the Ravens, Courtney Upshaw, and that will take us to the finish line. Well, the night that started so promisingly for the Pittsburgh Steelers, less than a minute into the game, they get a touchdown. But Jacoby Jones with the biggest play of the game, the punt return. It's all about defense as it normally is in this series. And the Baltimore Ravens have put themselves in tremendous shape in the AFC North. They really did. But for the Pittsburgh Steelers, blowing those two timeouts was huge. You can't make those kinds of mistakes in big games like this. Baltimore wins it 13-10 with the Wendy's Post Game Report. Coming your way next.